what's up you guys welcome back to the televised podcast my name is anna and today we're going to be talking about supergirl episode 504 it is called in plain sight and listen i'm gonna be real with you guys the episode is kind of boring it's kind of boring a little bit boring just a little bit um so it was a little bit boring um not a whole lot happened that was like super interesting I guess like I guess like in terms of the main plot until like literally the last like 15 minutes because you know pretty much for the uh, the whole episode we were kind of dealing with stuff about Malefic that we already knew about you know we knew that they were having problems kind of keeping keeping him contained, being able to contain him, so we kind of knew that, and they were dealing with that. Uh, so for this week, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, I'm going to talk about Batwoman in a second, but I'm just basically kind of going to go through pretty quickly what happened in the episode. Um, I feel like there wasn't a whole lot of, like, character stuff that happened, so my usual method it wouldn't really work because a lot of it was just kind of, like, not repeat but but you know kind of like the same sort of thing I mean there's like obviously a couple of like key things that happened so I'm just gonna go in like chronological order this time um and then because honestly every season needs to have a filler episode or two and that's what this was it was it was a filler episode and that's there's nothing wrong with that it just means that I don't have a whole lot of exciting stuff to talk about until we get to the last, you know, like 15 minutes. So I'll talk about that, what that last 15 minutes means for the future of season five going forward for the next couple of episodes, at least, Um, you know, what that could possibly mean for characters like William, Kara, Lena, Hope, Malefic, all of that kind of stuff. Um, And then after that, we got some, I'm okay, I'm recording this on Monday, uh, the 29th. 28th. Monday the 28th um, is the day that I'm recording this. So today, just today, like, a, you know, a couple hours ago, maybe four hours ago, news dropped that the CW is going to be making a Superman and Lois show with Tyler Hecklin as Superman and Bitsy Tulek as Lois Lane. I want to talk about that, what that means for the future of Supergirl, for the future of the Arrowverse. Um, uh, and then I also wanted to talk a bit about um, you know, just, I guess, just future, future stuff, um, because I'm stressing out (laughs) about everything, so I, I, this is kind of going to be, like, me venting, but also kind of breaking down everything, but, um, so let's get into the, uh, my Batwoman section really quick. I was about to say let's get into the episode, but I didn't even talk about Batwoman. It was good! It was a filler episode, too, kind of like Supergirl. Didn't learn a whole lot new. Um, I thought it was really funny to watch Kate and um, uh, Luke kind of fiddle with the Batwoman suit with how finicky it kind of is, like the moment where she throws the Batarang and it just doesn't come back. Um, And Luke is like, well, it's because Bruce has longer arms than you. And um, so I thought that was really, really funny and just like a really fun kind of little moment. Fun... um, motif going through the episode was Kate learning how to use her suit, uh, which was really funny. Um, and I also loved Kate and Regan, uh, Regan, 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 anyway, love them. I thought they were super cute. (laughs) I'm very upset that they already are over, but I think that that was kind of cool. It was, it was a kind of like, you know, a look at, um, what it's like living a double life because, you know, Obviously, we see that on Supergirl, but we really don't see it as much as we used to because literally everybody on Supergirl knows now that Kara is Supergirl, except for Kelly. It just It's just Kelly, <laughs> but, oh, I guess, and William, but I feel like he already knows, and Andrea, I guess, but I, I think she knows as well. Anyway, so we don't really get that trope as much as we used to on Supergirl. So I really enjoy it seeing it on Batwoman, seeing Kate try to juggle this relationship that she's trying to have with this really cute girl that she met at this bar or at the gala or whatever, at the bar, at the gala, um, and then trying to be Batwoman. <laughs> she's like, Luke, you keep interrupting me and I'm mad at you. <laughs> But I, I, yeah, so I really enjoyed them. I thought it was so funny when um, 
Reagan and Kate were like they finally found each other and then Sophie kind of shows up and she's working the event and she's like uh who's this Kate I didn't know you had a date and Reagan's like so this is Sophie your ex hi (laughs) it was just really funny I thought it was so good um yeah so and then we uh next week for Batwoman um we finally get the Alice backstory that I've been wanting. Oh, I forgot to mention Mary in this episode was so amazing. She like, you know, her working with Batwoman was so great. And I love that aspect of like Kate, you know, is Mary's sister. And then Batwoman shows up and it's like, well, this doesn't count. It's kind of, again, it's like kind of the Carolina thing where you're like, or, you know, Carolina Supergirl thing where it's like, well, you know, Kate kind of checked up on Mary as Batwoman, but then, you know, she can't be Kate Kane and, and be there at the same time for Mary. So it's like, oh, a, a disconnect. But I really enjoyed it. Um, but anyway, next week, Alice backstory. So my Batwoman segment might be a little longer next week because ba- Alice is literally all I want to talk about next week. It's Alice week. I don't care. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm so excited for Alice. I just I love her I love her so much Rachel Scarston please spare hand in marriage ma'am like (laughs) I just I love Alice and I I just everything about her although I was a little freaked out when she cut that guy's finger off this episode I was like oh my god oh my god it was kind of scary um oh but I was I was really intrigued by that twist at the end of Batwoman where um Oh God, I don't know her name. Mary's mom and and Kate's dad's wife. I don't know her first name. That's terrible. Um, Mrs. Hamilton. <laughs> she. I cannot believe that she confessed to Kate's dad that she made up the whole thing about about Beth's bones. I was like, oh my God. I thought we would like drag that out more, but holy shit. But I'm really excited because what I think is going to happen on Batwoman is that by the end of the season, hopefully, 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 um, Alice kind of is like an uh, anti-villain. Um, and then I think uh, uh, Mary's mom is going to be kind of one of the main villains of, of the season um, because I really want Alice to stick around. And I think she'd be a really fun fun anti-villain because you know it's kind of like a like a Harley Quinn type or you know you know what I mean like a like she definitely causes trouble but she has good intentions and she's you know trying to save the day hopefully you know she can work towards being a better person and not cutting people's fingers off but I'm excited I I hope I'm right about that because again I love to see Rachel Scarston stick around forever on Batwoman um, and then also congratulations to Batwoman. I'm sure, you know, congrats to them. Uh, they got a full season ordered from the CW as well as Nancy Drew, which I also love. And if you're not watching, you should totally check it out. Um, it is, it is super great. It is super spooky. Um, but I love it. And, um, uh, there's lesbians on Nancy Drew as well. <laughs> Any CW show now got lesbians. You already know if you listen to me talk about the CW on my other podcast episode, um, what, six podcasts ago? So anyway, I'm just really excited about Batwoman. I love it so, 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 so much, but now it's time to talk about Supergirl. So like I said, I'm just going to kind of go in chronological order. I'm just going to go for it, mention kind of the big stuff that happened, um, because like I said, it wasn't super exciting. Had some cute little character moments in it, but I wasn't really, I wasn't super into it. Just, again, filler episode. It happens. Um, so, in the beginning, they try to send Malefic back to the Phantom Zone, but it does not work because he can phase through their, like, Phantom Zone, uh, gun. Their, like, Phantom Zone portal gun. So, they're, like, oh crap, what are we supposed to do if we can't, like, they literally, like, shot him straight on, like, Jean was straight on with that thing, and it still, like, just did not work, like, he fully just went, it went right through him, 
And um, so they were like, God damn, we got to like fix that. So that is kind of the overarching plot of the episode where they've got to figure out how they can stop Malefic from phasing through this portal gun and send him back to the Phantom Zone where he belongs. Um, so we had that plot line running. Then we also had, then we see Kelly and James driving to uh, where they used to live, their old hometown. Um, can't remember the name of the town, but it was, they, they're shocked to find that it is kind of, looks like a ghost town now. It's like nobody's there. You know, places look kind of a little bit more run down. Um, people are handing out soup in parking lots. Like, it's it's clearly kind of become a more, um, like, like it's, the, the community has definitely been suffering. And they find out why. They see a gigantic prison in this town. So they're like, since when is there a prison here? So that's their story storyline for this whole episode is is them trying to uh I guess relearn their old town obviously be on the run um from Malefic but like they're like gonna fight the prison system in this town is basically what's going on so then we see everybody's huddled at the DEO Alex is like we have to find Kelly I'm losing my mind with out Kelly and then Brainy's like I'm losing my mind without Nia and Kara's like y'all are so heartbroken everybody here is heartbroken nobody can work nobody can focus everybody's emotions are running super super high it's just drama in the DEO and so Kara's like well let's bring in uh Lena to try and figure this thing out But before that, Alex puts on the table, she's like, well, we have this Martian killer gun in the basement. Why don't we just use that? And Jean's like, what? And Kara's like, uh, what? Like, that would be if Alex suggested using kryptonite on Superman because he's been mind controlled or something. You know, like, that was crazy, crazy, crazy. And, you know, Alex is just basically like, whatever we need to do to get Kelly to come back here. Okay? Like... So, all of that starts happening, and at the same time, Kara gets a phone call from Nia, and Nia's like, hey, Kara, you know what the T is? William is shady, and I I know it, because he was supposed to be on assignment to London, but now he's going to Mexico City, because somebody wrote it on a newspaper, and so he was like, all right, I'm going to Mexico City, and then... uh, Brainy was like, oh my god, was that Nia? Did she ask about me? And it was very sweet. Um, so then we see Lena and Hope, and I don't even remember, I don't even remember what happened in the scene, but uh, Lena and Hope, uh, Hope was like, oh, in this journal it's like says how to do it, but we can't figure it out or whatever. And I'm thinking, I'm sitting there thinking, If one of the, if, like, okay, the theme this season, the theme this season is being too trusting of people. They have already, it is only episode four, but they have already beat us over the head with that theme. Because it is in every single character's storylines. Like, literally every single one. Like, Kara, too trusting of Lena right now, unfortunately. That's, like, her being too trusting. Also, as I'll talk about later, probably of William. Um, and we saw Kelly being too trusting of that friend. And then we see, you know, um, Lena in this scene being too trusting of hope because honestly, and as somebody pointed out on Twitter, I don't remember who, hope could have said anything. Like hope was the one that translated this journal entry of Lex's hope could have put anything in there. And Lena just, like, blindly trusts this this technology because, you know, she's like, well, I created it and there's no flaws in it. And it's, it's frankly, you know, her arrogance that is kind of going to get her in trouble eventually. Because she she is extremely arrogant this season. And that's, you know, I, lo- I love Lena. You know I do. I love Lena. But that's just, like, something that is uh, happening with her character this season where she is being written very arrogantly. Um, 
And I feel like that is definitely going to get her in trouble. But, you know, like I said, she's being too trusting of, of Hope, but then not trusting enough of, of Kara and the rest of the super friends as she is now a part of. Um, so uh, we also heard Kara speaking Spanish. Um, and oh, and then Lena's like, oh, what if we just detained Malefic? Like we could harness his power or whatever. I'm like, lady, you don't even know what you're talking about. You don't know who this guy is. You haven't seen him in, like, in action. She wasn't around for all this hullabaloo with, um, Kelly and Alex and all of that. She didn't, she didn't see any of that. So she's definitely, like, that was just arrogance off the charts. She's going to, she's just so over, like, it's all over her head. And I think we're going to see that to the 10th degree next episode. I And I'm kind of excited for it because I think once Lena kind of gets like knocked back down to earth a little bit, then it'll, things will start to like smooth over. Um, but again, I feel like it's always in the presence of, of hope. And then even like at the DEO, she's being really arrogant. Um, so I don't know. It's, it's very interesting. Um, so lots of things are happening. Lots of like lots of developments or lots of, you know, just like plot things are happening. You know, Nia and, and Kara keep uh, investigating William. Um, Kelly and James, they find this kid that lives, that's like been living in their aunt's house uh, while nobody was there. And he was just doing homework. Like he wasn't even stealing. He was just like doing homework with his friends in this house. Um, and they catch him at a grocery store and the owner is like kind of be, you know, kind of being really rough with him for stealing this, uh, basically Chef Boyardee can. And Kelly's like, I thought you had to leave the store to steal because he was like roughing him up inside, which is crazy. And it's, you know, unfortunately what happens to quite a few people in this country when you're just walking around a store holding something and then they think you're sus suspicious. Um, and so Kelly and, and James invite him to dinner that night uh, because uh, well, later they learn that he, his mother went to prison for stealing a $30 heater from the store. She went to prison for 10 years and he doesn't know where his dad is. So he's basically like an orphan living on the street um, and he crashes it at uh, John or excuse me, James and, and Kelly's place because he doesn't have anywhere else to go. And, you know, and his friends, too, like, they all come and hang out. So that's, I thought that was a really cool storyline. And then, obviously, it eventually leads to um, James's exit, which I thought was very fitting. But I'll talk about that in a bit. Um, Cara goes to Mexico, sees William doing shady shit. She goes to Eve Torres's apartment, fate confronts this, this, like, I guess, like, alien or metahuman or whatever. She's, like fully like sucking the air out of Kara's lungs and Kara just like whips a table at her and she like survives but that totally would have cut that woman in half like that that table would have cut that woman in half <laughs> but that's fine um oh and then f the DEO for a s extremely secure top secret agency it sure is easy to get in there it is so easy to get in the DEO. I feel like it is easier to break into that place than it is to, like, get into CatCo. I don't know. <laughs> it is so easy to break into the DEO. Malefic got in there like that. He was in. And then he mind-controlled Alex. And so Alex is mind-controlled. And Lena, since she was summoned to the DEO, she is working with Brainy. It is very sweet because she... <laughs> She sees Brainy kind of having this meltdown because he cannot figure it out. He can't stop thinking about Nia. He cannot do two things at once because he's trying to figure out Nia. He's trying to figure out Jean. They're hurting Jean in the process of all of this, trying to figure this out. So Lena's like, Brainy, let me help you. Just ask for help. It was very sweet, but it was very, um, a very, I'm like, Lena, take your own advice, like pot calling the kettle black kind of thing. Like, take your own advice, Lena. You need to like talk about, talk, ask for help or like talk about this with somebody. But anyway, so then Lena fully transforms into season three Morgana Pendragon. And once everybody's out of the room, she like sneaks this little, little, little device into the um, 
portal gun thing. And we all know what that does. It reroutes Malefic, as we see later in the episode. It reroutes Malefic, puts him into Lena's L Corp lab instead of into the Phantom Zone. Um, so then we see James. He's at this newspaper because he's like, uh, this sucks. This prison is obviously fully corrupted and they're just putting people in there to keep making money off of it. And so he talks to the the head of this newspaper who actually mentored him and he's like, this is wrong. And the newspaper guy's like, well, we're not going to stop publishing or, you know, we're not going to, we're just going to keep promoting um, prison propaganda because I employ 30 people here. And we need that prison to keep the town going or whatever. And so James is like, what the hell? What happened to honest reporting? Um, yeah, so then, oh, we find out that uh, Elena wasn't actually dead. But I don't think, we never like got an answer for that. So I think next episode we'll deal with that because she's obviously connected to William. Um then Alex absolutely tears Jean apart. Mind-controlled Alex tears Jean apart, like, fully. Just says the meanest things to him. Uh, and it's obviously all Malefic's feelings, but it's it's just, it's so, it was so brilliant um, on Kyler and David's part. It was such a great scene. It was just so well done with the emotion, with, you know, with just the pain that you see from Jean and then kind of like the, the empty eyes that Alex had, like it was, it was really good. I, it was, it was an amazing performance on that scene. Um, and then we just basically see John kind of being like, well, you know, I still love my brother, but like, you know, we, he, there was nothing wrong with him. We ostracized him, which I feel like is fully a parallel for Lena. So I feel like I'm I'm really interested to see what happens now that they're together, because I think that there's a lot of parallels between them, between Jean ostracizing his brother and Kara ostracizing Lena from like everything, you know. So I'm intrigued to see where that goes, but um, they find out that Alex is brainwashed, and then. Kelly can see, I forgot to mention this, Kelly can see through Malefic's eyes, which I feel like will come in very handy next episode. Um, but it comes in handy now because she realizes that Alex is mind controlled. So she and James, they dip out of this town, but not before this kid is like, what, you're leaving? Like, how could you leave me? Like, you just got me a lawyer, but now you're just going to dip? Like, what? So, all of that happens, and um, they meet at the planetarium. Malefic is there. Alex is there. Alex has that crazy gun, but it doesn't... I, I guess it was the gun? I don't know. I thought that they said that it could, like, kill Martians, but Jean gets hit with it, like, six times, and it does not hurt him. I mean, it hurts him, but it doesn't kill him, so I don't know. I don't know if it was actually the gun or not, but... Anyway, so then they do this thing and they fight and all this stuff and and then uh, they hit him with the uh, portal thing and they're like, yay, he's gone. He's in the phantom zone. But no, he's not. No, he's not. He's at Lena's place. So then we get this amazing Supercorp scene where Sakara shows up and she finds Lena and she's like, Lena, you're a genius. Like, you saved the day. I don't know what we'd do without you. And Lena was like, isn't this so fun working together now that I know who you actually are? And Kara's like, yeah, it's amazing. Um, <laughs> I can't believe that Kara does, just thinks that Lena, like, is fine after all of this. But you know what? Whatever. It's cute. Her blind optimism is, <laughs> is very sweet. But anyway, so Kara's like, well, get used to it because you're a super friend now. And we have a t-shirts and a handshake. I'll teach it to you. And Lena is fully giggling, fully like, you know, it's very, very sweet. Kara's like, hey, we're going to go out and get drinks tonight. Do you want to come? And Lena's like, nah, I'm also a CEO in case you forgot. So I got to go back to L Corp and be a CEO, even though we haven't actually seen her kind of being a CEO since like episode one. Is L Corp still float? Is it still doing good? Is she still a billionaire? I don't know. 
And then Brainia, Brainy and Nia finally work out their issues, which was very sweet. It was so cute. I'm so excited to see them kind of keep going in the future with what they're doing. Um, Cause Nia's like, you know, I I will always be there for you. And Car actually gave her that advice, which is what she said to Lena, which is another I- instance of romantic coding with Supercorp. Thank you, Supergirl staff, for nothing. Um, uh, and then we find out that this is that James is leaving. So he bought. I don't know with what money, but I guess he, like, is rich now because he, like, ran cat. I bet he did run CatCo, but he didn't, like, own it. I guess he was just, like, I don't know. He was, like, what, CFO of CatCo? Anyway, so he buys this, um, he buys the newspaper in that town. Don't ask me what the name is. He buys the newspaper in the town, so he goes he, there. This, this scene is, like, a send-off for him, and I was very upset by this because this season... They finally managed to, like, write him good again. Like, season two and season three and and season four, I just did not care for his character. But, of course, when he's going to leave in season five, they bring back kind of his season one, um, you know, like, vibes where you're like, this is a good guy. This is my boy, James. And then um, at the end of the episode, we, you know, see him at his, in his new office at this at this newspaper and and he says call me Jimmy um which just full circle for everything I kind of I not to sound like a cheesy old white lady but that shit was breathtaking bro like I it was just it was a great moment like I could not have asked for a better send-off I think that him being like a senator or something was just not for him even though obviously I was I would have been super supportive of that idea that would have been awesome but this is so James like this is so James and I'm I'm so excited about that I'm it was really really sweet to you know hear him say like call me Jimmy so now it's like full circle he's Jimmy Olsen and that is who we leave him off as and I thought that was really awesome um I don't know I I was just so happy with it I was so happy with the ending because you know I was I was really scared I was really scared that they were going to kill him off, but they didn't. So, you know, kudos to Supergirl, Supergirl writers. You, you just, you sent, you, you gave us a great send off for this character. He got a much more emotional send off than mon did, which, you know, very deserved. Um, so then here we go. The final 15 minutes of this episode happen and William well, okay, Kara breaks into William's, like, burner apartment, and she finds literally the only thing in there is this post- this cork board that's got, like, you know, red string on it, like, a picture of Andrea right in the middle of it, Andrea Rojas, and then you have, like, Elena, and you've got the the guy that got- I think it was the guy that got tattooed, and then other people are on this board, and Kara's like, oh my god, what is he doing? And William, of course, comes right in and he's like, Kara, what are you doing in here? (laughs) That was terrible. I'm so sorry. (laughs) I really, I apologize to any British listeners and Stasner. But he's like, Kara, what, you know, what are you doing in my apartment? And Kara's like, what is this, William? What is it? I know you're shady. I know you went to Mexico. I saw you there but I wasn't there for sure. <laughs> How would I get there? It was, yeah, so she confronts him about everything. And so William is like laying on the charm. He's like, listen, I had to act like an asshole to get in Andrea's good graces. You know, I wanted to be nice to you this whole time. You're such a good person. You're a great reporter. You're great this. You're awesome. You're amazing. But it all feels, to me, it all feels super empty. Because he doesn't know anything about her. He spent this whole time shunning her at work, being a jerk ass to her. And now he's like, oh, well, you know, I I love you and you're a great reporter and, and your writing is so amazing. Like, so that's what makes me think, especially because we got this twist so early in the season, that this isn't the end of these William twists. Like, he's gonna keep twisting. He's like a top. You just keep spinning. Keep spinning him. Because I think, and a lot of other people think as well, that 
Andrea is actually going to be a good, like, character. She's not going to be a villain. Um, which I think would be really, really interesting because in the comics, she is a hero. Like, she's this hero called Akrata. I'm saying that probably as white as I possibly can. You know who I'm talking about. So she is this hero in the comics. So it's like, well, why would they totally 180 switch her? I mean, I guess they kind of did that for Agent Liberty. They did, but... Uh, you know, that doesn't fit my theory, so let's not talk about that. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, so there is, like, obviously some holes in this theory, but I think it'd be really interesting if it was, like, well, William is, like, using Andrea being a bad person as, like, a cover to be a bad person. If, or, maybe Andrea is, in fact, a bad person, but William is a worse person. <laughs> like, Maybe, like I've been saying, maybe William is working for Leviathan to take out Andrea because she's not complying with this whole we want to brainwash everybody in the whole world thing that I think that Obsidian is probably involved in with Leviathan with the context. So, you know, it's who knows what might happen, but I don't think that that's the end of revelations about William because that was too easy it was too easy it was too early everybody know everybody knew that that was coming and also I really hope that they don't make him Kara's love interest again Uh, what is it with Supergirl wanting to give Kara the worst absolute most disgusting jerk asses on the planet for boyfriends like what is it about her that screams She wants to date awful men. Like, no, she doesn't. She doesn't. I know she doesn't. (laughs) I asked her personally, and she does not want to date awful men. Um, So I I just hope that, you know, that this is not where that's going. But, you know, Stasner did an an interview, um, and he said, like, people are like, oh, well, people are speculating that Cara and William may be, you know, getting together. And he's like, wow, that's interesting. (laughs) And then he said something about ships and whatever, and he was obviously talking about Supercorp. He wants to kind of stay in the good graces of the Supercorps, which is good advice. <laughs> um, so all of that happened. And um, also, it's kind of gross, like, that William, like, decided to be a jerk ass as his cover. Like, he couldn't think of anything else besides, like, a sexist monster to, like be you know it's like ugh, god it's so tired so gross i don't know um so I, whatever whatever happens with him i'm very intrigued because obviously this next episode um it's gonna have Kara working with william uh which will be very interesting hopefully we'll have some revelations about him in that episode um you know see their kind of working relationship develop more um and then the episode after that, we actually get Andrea Rojas's backstory. So maybe we could find out even more about William and Andrea through that. Maybe we'll find out that Andrea is actually a good person. Who knows? Who knows what might happen? But, you know, uh, that's kind of what I'm thinking is kind of the trajectory of the season. Um, because, like I said, this theme of this season is trust nobody, basically. Like, Y'all are too trusting is basically what the theme of this season is, which I think is very cynical for a Supergirl season. Um, uh, But I'm like, well, if you say trust nobody, then I don't even trust you, Supergirl staff. I don't. I don't trust you. Um, So I'm like, well, what if what they're presenting is just like a red herring? You know, it was kind of like I I just rewatched Maleficent. So it's kind of like including Prince William in the Maleficent movie. But having him be a red herring and Maleficent is actually the one who bestows true love's kiss upon Aurora, you know, in the form of this, like, mother-daughter true love relationship. Um, So that's maybe, you know, what the Supergirl writers are doing with certain characters, certain situations. I don't know. I'm very intrigued, very interested to see what actually happens. Um, So then we see... We also see Lena having Malefic in her possession. And like I said before, who knows what's going to happen with that. I feel like Lena's just going to get brainwashed like that. It's going to be so quick. He's just going to be like, you must do as I say. (laughs) 
and then I guess maybe we'll have Lena truly being brainwashed. Maybe I was totally wrong about Hope this whole time, and Lena's gonna actually be truly brainwashed by Malefic. Who knows, though? Um, I don't know. I This episode kind of obviously left me a little uninspired. I'm very sorry um, about this. Um, but I'm also very annoyed by the Supergirl writers because, again, we see Lena doing shady stuff just like she did with the Harinelle, just like we see her do with all this other stuff. Like, like, when will they come up with an original idea? Like, please stop telling the same story over and over and over again. I'm so sick of it. Either make Lena evil or don't. Like, this is worse than making Lena just fully evil. Like, it truly is. Because it's this back and forth that we've literally seen since the introduction of her character. So I'm just sick of it. I wish it would end. I, I, just, I wish it would end because she always like goes to the brink of this like shady, these shady dealings and then is pulled back, you know, like so commit to it or don't. Like get it together. I don't know. <laughs> oh, but really quick. Another thing that I wanted to talk about is that scene between Kara and Lena at the end of this episode or, you know, kind of before the bar scene where Kara talks about t-shirts and handshakes. That was fully a break. Like, the take that they used was a break. Like, they broke. Katie, you can see the moment where she breaks in that clip. It's, like, right after Kara says, like, the handshake thing, and then they do, like, a... You can see her, like, dip her head, and that's where she breaks. And then they cut to Melissa, and she's, like giggling through her line and that was fully a break too but they just kept going and they used that take and it was so lovely it was so nice I love that they did that I mean who knows maybe they intentionally did it that way but I just felt that that was just them being goofy on set and it totally worked so they just used it um and I love that I love 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 loved that um I feel like since Kelly now can see through Malefic's eyes, she's going to know instantaneously that Lena is in the possession of Malefic, um, or that Malefic is in the possession of Lena. Um, and I feel like she's going to tell Alex and then Alex is going to have to tell Kara and then it's just all going to kind of blow up from there. Um, it's going to be really intriguing to see what happens, but, um, I think that's for sure going to happen. Uh, it's definitely going to cause some conflict uh, in probably in Danson's relationship, unfortunately, and also in, in Kara's relationship with Kelly. Um, and then obviously Kara's relationship with Lena. Maybe we'll get the third reveal. Obviously, we still have yet to have the reveal where Lena reveals that she knew this whole time uh, before Kara told her. Maybe we'll get that either this week or or this coming week or the week after. I don't know, but I feel it coming. I can feel it in my bones. I feel it. Uh, but also, I just, I, I, there's no way that that's not going to happen. Like, they used Kelly getting these flashes way too much for them to not use that next episode or the episode after. Um, and then I also saw this post that was like, look... The revelation, oh, it's from Kara Supergirl XOXO on Tumblr, just so you know. I just thought it was really good. Look, the revelation about William and Andrea, that came way too soon in the season for it to be the truth. Kara's, oh, excuse me, William's speech was so over the top, it could not have been genuine. He knows Kara's Supergirl and he knows she saw him in Mexico. So now he's playing her and pretending to be good. William is going to end up being the bad guy, not a love interest. And Lena, well, in order for Kara to save her soul, she needs to go down this path right now. And they say Supercorp is still endgame. True. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's, it's just, uh, that's, I think, all I've got on the episode. Like I said, it was a pretty, pretty boring episode, pretty boring episode. Um, yeah, so it was, it was kind of boring, but like I said, you need a filler in the season. You need a filler or two in the season. I'm glad that it wasn't one of the, like, very first couple of episodes, because that always sucks when you get to, like, you know, it's episode three, and it's already, like, a really boring filler episode. Um, but I mean, it was full of, like, good moments, but, you know, just kind of a little bit slow. 
I'm not knocking the episode. It was still very much like a solid eight out of 10. But like I said, just a little bit slow, a little bit, little bit boring at times, a little bit irrelevant, I guess, to the plot. It, that's just what it felt like. It was like, why did we watch that? Oh yeah. I, so Superman and Lois Lane. They're getting a show on the CW, um, which means a couple of things. It means a couple of things. Um, I guess it means that we're officially going to be entering the second era of the Arrowverse. Um, I think at least the way that I'm looking at it, and I believe the way that the CW is looking at it, is that Crisis is basically the arrow versus end game. So now we're like, we're about to enter phase two, you know, of, of, um, of this, of, of the arrow verse, you know, obviously we have green arrow and the canaries coming next year. Um, Batwoman just started, which I, you know, she'll be kind of, um, not the leader, but you know, she kind of took arrows place as like the dark grim show. Um, and, even though Green Arrow and the Canaries is still going to be there. I feel like it'll just maybe be a little less grim. I don't know. I hope so. (laughs) We don't need two overwhelmingly grim shows. I feel like it'll be more Flash-y. You know what I mean? Like, because Flash isn't as bright and hopeful as Supergirl, but it's not as dark and dreary as Arrow or Batwoman. So hopefully it'll kind of fall in there. Um, And then we have Superman and Lois Lane, um, which will be very, very interesting, um, you know, to see going forward what happens. Um, I know that the announcement of this show has caused everybody to lose their minds and to worry, uh, incessantly that Supergirl is going to be canceled. Um, right now I'm hopeful, um, but I'm also not. (laughs) I'm scared. I'm concerned. I'm concerned. I mean, I think there's reason enough to be concerned just because, of course, you know, we're getting up there in the in the number of seasons that Supergirl has. But I feel like the CW really wouldn't want to end any of their Arrowverse shows like earlier than they did Arrow. You know what I mean? Like they did 10 seasons of Smallville. I think at least 10 seasons of Smallville. I think that there are 10. Um, so they did 10 seasons of Smallville and now they're doing like basically what is seven and a half seasons of Arrow, but it's, it's eight, but it's like seven and a half. Um, so I feel like really the minimum that they'd want to max any of these shows out at is seven seasons. I think that they want to go all the way with giving each of these shows eight seasons, you know, if obviously viewership pending, but they all do really well. And that was what I was going to mention, too, is that um, the ratings for last week's episode uh, went up very like uh, over 100 percent in the live plus three ratings, which means that it takes into account the live viewership as well as streams on. I think it counts the CW app, um, DVR on demand. um, And I think, you know, just anywhere else, like if you buy it on iTunes or, you know, if you, you know, if you get a pass on iTunes and and it buys each episode for you, or like if you buy it on Amazon or whatever, or you even rent the episode, I think you can rent episodes. (laughs) You probably have to buy them. But anyway, so it counts, it takes all of that into account. Um, So the viewership doubled, over doubled um, later, which I think obviously is just an issue with Sunday time slots because people are busy. Unfortunately, it is football season. You know, people want to watch football. People are going to go to school the next day. People, you know, they just forget to like sit down on a Sunday night at nine o'clock on the East Coast. Like, you know, it's, it's a little bit hard to tune in when you're, in that time zone. So they're doing really well for the slot. They're still pulling more than Charmed did last year. And Charmed also got renewed, although it did get put into the Friday slot, which is kind of the slot of death. But, you know, we'll see what happens to Charmed. (laughs) Um, Although apparently it's doing really well there. So like, good for Charmed. I don't, I don't watch, but maybe I will. Um, If you've listened to my other episodes, I really love Sarah Jeffrey, obviously, because she was in Descendants. I did an episode on Descendants a while ago. Um, but yeah, maybe I'll watch. Uh, but anyway, so I don't know. I just, 
I have hope, especially because I was at C2E2 this year and I heard Tyler Hecklin in person talk about his experience with Melissa and how much he loves the show Supergirl. And someone even brought up, they're like, well, there's rumors about a Superman show. Does that mean that Supergirl will end? And he literally got so visibly upset at that. He was like so upset. He was like, I don't want that. I don't want Supergirl to end. I love Supergirl. Like, I, Melissa needs to stay on the air. She is Supergirl. Like, it was just amazing. So, you know, I think, if anything, like, Tyler Hecklin's gonna fight for the show. Like, um, but at least a couple months ago, the CW boss, Mike Pedowitz, has said that he doesn't have any plans on ending The Flash, Supergirl, Legends anytime soon. Um, there was even an, uh, like a, rumor or like an idea I guess floating around that they would put uh Superman and Lois Lane into their summer catalog and and have it be a summer show which I think would be really really interesting um to have Superman uh airing in the summer because you know I feel like if anybody he could pull views in the summer like nobody wants to air stuff in the summer because people are so busy and it just you just don't get the views in the summer But I think that'd be really interesting if they did want to open the door for summer programming. Um, So I genuinely, I don't think this is the kiss of death for Supergirl. Um, And especially because, if anything, I feel like it's more worrisome for The Flash just because I feel like they'd want to, like, use all of these, like, connections with and, like, mini mini crossovers between Supergirl and Superman. Like, why wouldn't they want to do that? Like they would want to use that connection that they have and like kind of have these consistent mini crossover events kind of like they did with Arrow and Flash when they first started those shows. So, you know, I I don't think this is the kiss of death, but hopefully somebody from the CW will come out and kind of like squash any rumors that are flying around or like Melissa will make a statement, at least just kind of confirm any kind of suspicion. Like, either way like just I just I would just like to know because I am sick of worrying about it and it's only been a couple hours so but any, but anyway I congratulations to Tyler Hecklin and um uh Bitsy Tulek who are amazing and also that confirms that Tyler's Superman is not dying in crisis which is incredible because we knew that <laughs> at least I knew that I knew that it was going to be Brandon Routh's Superman that died um but that's good. I love his Superman. I'm so excited. He's such a good guy. He's such a great um, actor. He's he's just such a great Superman. I think he's the best Superman, personally, like, better than any that we've ever seen. Um, and then I love Bitsy as Lois Lane. She's just so amazing. Um, and I'm, I'm so excited to see them. It'll probably be kind of like a family drama because, like, they're going to be raising their baby, baby John, uh, which is amazing. Or hopefully it'll be John. Um, uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. I'm really intrigued to see what happens. Um, hopefully, you know, we get some news about Supergirl soon. Uh, but I think the future looks bright for them, especially because, you know, I think Melissa is so passionate about this project. She's going to fight she's going to fight for it, you know, if, if push comes to shove. So, you know, we'll see, we'll see what happens, but I'm going to leave you on a hopefully more positive note. Um, also, if you noticed, I put up a bonus episode this weekend, um, because I am going to do these bonus episodes once a month. Um, and it was me talking about horror movies, which I absolutely despise, but i I think the genre is very cool. And it's basically a horror 101. It's like an intro to horror. It's got the history of it, uh, why horror makes money, um, uh, why, uh, like the different, like the cult following of horror, the different subgenres, and why I think it's super interesting, even though I'm not even into it. Um, so if you want, you could give that a listen, check it out. It's not super long, it's only like a half an hour, I guess. Um, so if you want to, you could check it out. Um, I'm really proud of it and I think it's really cool, especially just in time for Halloween, which will be tomorrow when you guys are listening to this. So if you're feeling spooky, you can watch that or listen to that if you want to. Um, remember 
uh, do all the things. Rate on iTunes if you would like, if you enjoy the podcast. Subscribe, follow, whatever you do. Like on YouTube. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you thought of this episode, what you think of these theories, what you think is going to happen with Supergirl and Superman and all of this stuff. Uh, follow me on Twitter. Tweet me at TelevisedPod. Let me know what you thought. And hope you enjoy this coming episode on Sunday. Hope you have a nice, safe Halloween. Um, yeah, so I will see you guys next week. Bye.